And uh, right now he's uh, dabbling a little bit in the pot of theory, which is hard. <laughs> Helps when you have the inside information from the king. And uh, he takes the codfish from here, his, he and his brothers and family take the codfish from here down to the West Indies, and they trade it for the rum and molasses and spices and uh, also sugar and chocolate. Chocolate comes to Lewisburg uh, mainly from Martinique. We know that um, the governor has 30 pounds of chocolate in his Indian world. Um, keeps that a lost box in his bedroom. Don't <laughs> trust his servants. <laughs> Chocolate is very expensive. Yeah, yeah, very expensive at the time. One pound or one liter of uh, these of chocolate would cost you three leaves. Now, a soldier makes 18 leaves a year, and he ends up paying, um, get, getting about 13 leaves by the time his expenses were taken out of that. So you can see that it's really out of the range for the poorer classes. Although, um, we know that some of the Acadians outside the walls and the Basque, they have some chocolate uh, paste. And that's how it starts off. You take the cocoa tree. Uh, it grows about uh, 20 degrees from the uh, equator. So it has to be in really hot temperatures. And um, it grows on a tree, and the tree will, will have pods that will stem on it. And um, these pods will be taken off when they're ripe, and then uh, the seeds will be taken out and left to dry and ferment. Then they are ground down these seeds into a paste, and that's the chocolate paste. After that point, to get something like this or something like this, they're going to add cinnamon, nutmeg, uh, maybe a little bit of cloves, some sugar, uh, sometimes even a little vanilla will go in that. And that's what you're having right now, that type of chocolate. Uh, it's made special for us by the Mars Company. And um, the only thing is about this, it's 70% uh, uh, cocoa. So um, if they, they haven't take the oil. So if you're looking in your cup and you see, what's that yellow <laughs> stuff in there? That's the cocoa butter. So it's good for you. It's not good for your hips, though, sir. No, I'll <laughs> tell you that. <laughs> but see, my, I'm all, my hips are all just pleats to, to make me look like I have. I'm actually just 90 pounds soaking. <laughs> so getting back to the chocolate. Now, uh, the chocolate is medicinal, as I said, so they use that paste um, to, to put on uh, burns and cuts and scrapes. Like we would use the butter in our generation. They were using the cocoa butter. So they kept a little bit aside just for emergency situations. And uh, so even the poorer classes would have just a little bit for that purpose. Um, also, a ball of chocolate or something that size could be um, put away in your pouch if maybe you had to um, go for a distance a day to the woods somewhere, maybe to visit the natives. Um, you do want to freeze to death, so you make sure that chocolate actually heats the body. So um, if you're going to drink some chocolate, you better have a glass of water to have right after that, so you don't overheat. Pregnant women don't have hot chocolate, and neither do children. Too medicinal for them. Beat them up too much. Now, the chocolate comes in this size. It comes in a one pound uh, ball, and in this size, like this. Now, to give you a little story about how uh, important the chocolate was, uh, here in Lewisburg, a, a sailing ship went down to Chimot. And uh, Chameau was a French pay ship, had barrels and barrels of gold coin, gold or keys to board it. And uh, mm -hmm. the governor uh, was very upset about this is the pay for the whole colony, not only Lewisburg, but Quebec. And so uh, they tried to um, retrieve um, this gold by sending down divers. Now, people do not swim in the 18th century. You do not get your whole body wet. 
if you do, you might uh, eliminate some of the protective oils that are on your skin, and then you might die of some fatal disease. We have a story of a young girl uh, that just lived outside here uh, in the pond outside, and uh, near, near the pond, and she fell in the pond. And when she did, she took to her bed. She was so sure that she would die. She'd gotten her whole body wet. After two years, she did die. But she stayed in bed for two years. It showed you what, it showed you what a fear they had of that. People didn't uh, wash their whole bodies. They would wash various parts. A soldier's uh, um, he's required to bathe once a year, whether he needs it or not. But the average person doesn't bathe mm -hmm. like you do. I mean, you're certainly not going to bathe here in the winter time. People smell real bad. <laughs> yeah, but everybody smelled pretty, pretty bad anyway. So nobody paid much attention. Now the upper classes, they would carry packets of perfume or potpourri uh, sewed inside their clothing or in a napkin. You often saw they take the napkin and they push the napkin across their face just ever so. Um, that was to hide the, the smell of the person they were talking to. How did they get people to die? You said they got divers? They got that? divers from Montreal. Oh, they, yeah. they, they, were they had to go crazy. all the way up there to find somebody who would actually go in the water. Yeah, It was a soldier actually from Montreal and, and what they did was they greased their body heavily with lard so they would cut the cold and they would uh, have a ration of meat to nourish the body and then they would have uh, some hot chocolate to heat the body before they went in the water. <laughs> Unfortunately, they never found the gold coin at that point in time. And the, the, the unique thing about it was that one of the divers that they brought down, his last name was Storm. And in uh, the 19, late 1950s, uh, the man that found the, uh, the treasure, was la his last name was Storm. Mm. Mm. There you go. <laughs> I guess all those years. Of it. So um, now, uh, as I was saying, uh, the chocolate. If you, the way to prepare this chocolate is to take it with a grater, and you grate down about two of those balls, and you put it in your chocolatier. That's what this is, a chocolatier. And it has a little hole in the top that you put uh, your baton or your stir stick in, and uh, you add your water or your milk. Now, in here in Lewisburg, we don't have a lot of milk. We get cattle on the hoof in the spring, and it grazes out on the Myra River for the summer and in the fall with leftovers and butchered and salted and put into barrels to do the colony for the winter months. But the poorer people, if they had any money at all, they'd have a goat, a few chickens, something you can barter with. So goat's milk would be more something that you would find inside the fortress or around the fortress rather than the cows. So you add your, your, your milk or your water, your cinnamon and nutmeg, that's if you're French. If you're Spanish, you're going to add um, red pepper. Yeah, that'll, that'll give it a little zing. And if you're uh, British, you'll add brandy. That's <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> Just for medicinal purposes. Remember, medicinal purposes. So once you have all these spices and whatever you want to put in your, your chocolate, you uh, mill it. And you'll mill that for 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, the good servants will mill that for 15, to make 15 minutes at least to make it nice and thick. And then you pour it into the recipe required. You pour it into a porcelain cup. If you can afford the chocolate, you can afford the cup. Okay. So a nice porcelain cup, and you pour that in there. Um, you can also pour it into a nice little two-handle. You've seen those two little two-handle cups? They're for the, the morning after the night before. <laughs> Just in case you don't want to spill any chocolate, you've got a handle. So you, you'd serve that, and as I said, you'd serve a little water on the side. And in many cases uh, here in Lewisburg, we know that um, the, uh, like I said, the governor had 30 pounds of it. Um, this man would have had lots of chocolate. Chocolate was fashionable 
In, in England, they're having tea parties. Here in the colonies, we're having coffee and hot chocolate parties. So uh, you, you want to impress somebody, you have a, them for afternoon um, tea. You do a little of embroidery with your lady and she'll have some biscuits or cookies and, and some hot chocolate. But always bother her. Don't want to overheat your body. Yes. So chocolate was never eaten per se like candy? Yes. Yes. Oh, You'd eat a ball just like this. Okay. You could eat a ball and mostly for breakfast. That's what they thought you should have that for was breakfast. As I said, the governor had 30 pounds of it in his inventory. But then he was suffering from severe gout and arthritis. He had one leg removed. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the poor man. Yeah. That, that didn't hurt the kid's condition at all. No. Well, he was on his last leg anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, somebody else had a question? Anybody else had a question?